Hey everybody, I'm Pastor Joshua Sullivan at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Kerrville, Texas, and you're watching ATP, Ask the Pastor. Before we get to today's question, you know the whole social media drill. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, share the video on social media if you like it, and then as well, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so. Click that notification bell so you don't miss upcoming episodes. All right, today somebody says, Pastor, in Lutheran hymnals, the phrase, I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church appears within the third article of the creed. In other denominations' hymnals, the same line reads, one holy Catholic and apostolic church. When did the more traditional word Catholic get replaced with Christian? Could you explain why and where this change came about with one of the most common parts of the divine service today? Yeah, sure. So you, you picked up on something that is unique to Lutheran liturgies that uh, descend from Germany. The word uh, used in the original creed uh, was Catholic, though it didn't appear in the Nicene Creed until uh, the creed was expanded at the Council of Constantinople in 381. And we don't have um, a certain account of that edition, the, the third article, until uh, the Council of Chalcedon in 451. But there, the fathers of the council confessed the original Nicene Creed and the expanded Nicene Creed, which read, and in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And by Catholic, the creed means uh, universal, that is, uh, throughout the entire world. So, great question. How did the word Catholic end up being rendered as Christian in Lutheran circles at the time of the Reformation? Well, it's popular to claim that Luther changed this himself, that he introduced this change in order to distance himself uh, and the Reformation from the Roman Catholic Church. And so today people will say things like, well, I'm Christian, not Catholic, uh, to designate that they're Protestant. But that actually wasn't the reason for the change. Luther commented uh, on the use of the word Christian instead of Catholic, very briefly in his 1538 treatise, The Three Symbols of the Cre or Creeds of the Christian Faith. And he said this, Christian, Catholica, can have no better translation than Christian, as was done heretofore. That is, although Christians are to be found in the whole world, the, the Pope rages against that and wants to have his court alone called the Christian Church. He lies, however, like his idol, the devil. Now, in this brief comment, there are two interrelated points that we want to note. The first is that Luther didn't understand the use of the word Christian to be a change at all. He simply understood it to be a synonym for Catholic. Now, Luther understands the Latin Catholica as Christlich in German. So again, for him, these words are synonyms, and, and this is how he understands it, not only in this writing, uh, but throughout his entire corpus of writings. Uh, in the German edition of his small called articles, Luther uses Christlich, when uh, the Latin translation of that same document uses Catholicum. We also see this uh, synonymy, uh, which understands Christlich and Catholica as synonyms, even when Luther doesn't use the word Catholica. So, for instance, in his 1528 work, Confession Concerning Christ's Supper, Luther describes the one holy Christian church on earth as Catholic without using the word Catholic. He writes, Next, I believe there is one holy Christian church on earth, that is, the community or number or assembly of all Christians in all the world, the one bride of Christ, and his spiritual body of which he is the only head, the bishops, or priests are not her heads, or lords, or bridegrooms, but servants, friends, and, as the word bishop implies, superintendents, guardians, or stewards. This Christian church exists not only in the realm of the Roman church or pope, but in all the world, as the prophets foretold that the gospel of Christ would spread throughout the world. Psalm 2, verse 8, Psalm 19, verse 4. Thus, this Christian church is physically dispersed among pope, Turks, Persians, Tartars, uh, but spiritually gathered in one gospel and faith under one head, that is, Jesus Christ. So the Holy Christian Church is not the Roman Church. The Holy Christian Church is wherever there are true Christians who hold to the true gospel, regardless of where those people are located. 
This same usage of Christian for Catholic makes its way then into the Book of Concord in both the Apostles and the Nicene Creed. Uh, the German Book of Concord uses Christlich, while the Latin translation of it uses Catholicum in both creeds. So that's the first point that Luther makes there. The second point from that writing, that 1538 treatise, The Three Symbols or Creeds of the Christian Faith, is that Luther didn't introduce the usage of Christian for Catholic. He inherited it. He wrote, Christian, Catholica, can have no better translation than Christian as was done heretofore. Meaning that his translation was already in use prior to Luther's time. It, it was not his personal invention. Later, Martin Chemnitz will address both these points. And he'll write, In this, the papists berate Luther with the charge of removing the word Catholic from the creed in the German language in order that he might impose his own name also on the assembly of the church. But I reply that it is true that even before the time of Luther, here and there, this article was recited thus, Ich glaube ein heiliger Christlich Kirche. I believe in one holy Christian church. Here the word Christian has the same meaning as Catholic, because the name Christian was spread throughout the entire world. And it is found this way in ancient manuscripts. Since Luther left the matter as he found it, he is falsely accused of fraudulently, fraudulently, there's that word, rejecting that word Catholic. So, Chemnitz's point is that Christlich was common vernacular usage in Germany well before the time of the Reformation. And this is why Luther kept it and employed it in his writings, uh, especially in his small catechism in the Apostles' Creed, and like we've said, through all of his writings. Now, Luther Reed, who was a 20th century Lutheran liturgical scholar, uh, demonstrated then as well that this usage wasn't uh, some Lutheran you know, idiosyncrasy, but rather it was a German idiosyncrasy. Luther Reed writes, Creeds of the 13th, 14th, and 15th centuries in England do not have either Catholic or Christian, but simply, I believe in Holy Church. The Germans apparently could not assimilate a word like Catholica. Uh, there was no real objection to the idea of Catholicity as such. Even German Roman Catholics after the Reformation continued to speak of eine heilige christliche Kirche. We must recognize this as a German idiomatic expression. So, the point of all of this is to say that Luther's translation of Catholica as Christlich was not an innovation on his part, nor was it born of any, uh, any anti-Roman sentiment, uh, nor was it an objection to the idea uh, that the Lutheran churches were truly Catholic. It was simply a regional custom, uh, as just as it appeared in the English churches, for them to say, I believe in a holy church. The idiom, rather, then, uh, was simply common usage at the time, and Luther continued that usage. Uh, it made its way, then, into English-speaking Lutheran churches very easily, uh, since the official edition of the Book of Concord was the 1580 German edition, using Christlich rather than Catholica for the creeds. And this is why, then, in Lutheran liturgies, Lutheran catechisms, and the like, Lutherans in English still confess the Holy Christian Church in both the Apostles' uh, Creed and then one Holy Christian and Apostolic Church in the Nicene Creed. A and by which we mean that there is one church with Christ as its foundation, Christ as its head, that is united throughout all the world in believing and confessing the common Christian faith. I hope this helps clear up some of the confusion, but really, yeah, they're the same, at least as far as Luther um, and his followers are concerned then. We'll see you next time for another episode of ATP, Ask the Pastor.